obviously if you're uh, you're watching this be sure to uh, you know don't watch if you're you want to hear it I'm gonna be doing a test real quick you're gonna hear double I apologize you're gonna hear double I apologize you're gonna hear double I apologize you're gonna hear double. okay how about now okay how about now All right, let's test that. 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 How about now? How about now? Good. How about now? Good, 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 good. Good. All good. How about now? We can go ahead and stop the double thing. I'll, uh, find a way. I'm trying to hide the, the sounds of my computer. Um, okay, so essentially what this is, if it, the title didn't make it obvious, I'm going to be designing a D&D world in an interesting way, uh, because I don't normally show off how I make my D&D stuff. Normally most of it's improvised, but I'm working on kind of a weird project here. I'm going to be working on making a world that's kind of more alive, because I want to be able to have multiple streams going and multiple people involved. Uh, so... I'm going to be going ahead and just making a world, essentially, kind of from the ground up. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, for example, on this world, um, there's going to be, uh, well, you know, you can see the title of it. I'm going to keep the font pretty big so you guys can read it. Hopefully that's okay. I'm going to drop it down to 20, actually, so you get a little more room. Um, yeah, looks good. So, you know, the way I like to explain how I make a D&D world is first I think of, okay, we have a, a planet, right? And then what kind of a planet is it? Is it like a water planet, desert planet? We're gonna, ours is going to be kind of like a traditional jungly planet, foresty, you know. All right, so at the planet level, it's going to be a forest, all right? Now, at the continent level, how many continents? Uh, I'm going to say that they're going to be... Okay, so then how many countries should there be, right? So, or, mm, yeah, there'll be, th uh, I should also add in a note. Um, there's gonna be three continents, um, and there's only gonna be how, yeah, I guess there would be three uh, bodies of water, oceans, yeah. You know, it's like Earth, but we're making it different, three continents instead of two, you know. Um, Okay, so then when we take a we think about it, we we've gotten the planet level, gotten the continent level. How many countries are there? Well, it's kind of up in the air. This is where we get to be creative. So we're gonna leave that um, blank actually uh, because we don't know yet. So first off, I like to just kind of throw out some names. Kind of just it's fun to throw out names. Why not? So we could be like hmm. I'm just gonna make up words almost. Uh, I could even, uh, you know, instead of just coming up with their, I could use a random name generator. That'd be cool. Actually, how about we do that? You guys can see my desktop, right? Okay. So I'm gonna pull up on, uh, you guys can't see this. Uh, I have a second uh, thing. Obviously it's gonna be fantasy names, uh, but we're gonna make it, uh, what origin? Let me think about this. Eh, I'll just do, um, I'll do what I traditionally do, okay. These are gonna, these are, I know this makes character names. Well, oh, actually, you know what? Here, let me change that. Go to the settings. Um, just do first name only. Name. These are real people names, but what you can do is you can just turn them into city names, because screw it. So... Boom. This is how I make, uh, come up with names sometimes. It's not copyrighted or anything. These are just like actual names. Could save that under character. So each each name we come up with. Hello. Hello, Valexion. Welcome to the behind the scenes stream of me designing uh, d and world or showing off how I design worlds essentially. Because later on I'm going to be running some D&D &D campaign stuff and I wanted to 
see how things are going. But welcome. Welcome to the stream. This is going to be a mini stream. It's only going to be about half an hour because uh, I have adult responsibilities to do. But then I'm going to come back, actually, uh, and keep working on this some more. Um, I just, I, adult things. You understand. Um, so anyway, this is a character name. And now these names I'm generating, they're all character names. But, uh, like, this one sounds kind of weird and fantastical. That could be a city name. Or uh, it could be a country name. And so, again, it could be a city or a country. Mm, maybe more of a city, because that doesn't sound quite as grand. Right, so maybe this could be a, a country, for example. And we've only made three names, and we're already, already just kind of categorizing them, sliding them into different stuff. Uh, here, I could even make a... to make it simpler. There. Okay. Where's my C key? Sorry. <laughs> country... Okay. Needs to be bold as well. Cities and uh, we could do, yeah. Characters. Okay. Excellent. Boom. Make a little bit of room. Okay. Great. And we'll go ahead and keep uh, regenerating names. I like to make a bunch of these. Uh, Ruzji. That could be a city. You can totally make a suggestion. This is. This is a stream. I would anything you want. You can type any name you want. Uh, we're just making up different. I need countries, cities, or characters. It's gonna be a fantasy setting. If that wasn't clear, um, I'm gonna keep generating names while I wait for you to, to type. Ooh, that could be a country, uh, just because it's so weird. Uh, and, for, and just so you know, for the settings, I'm using Dutch names. Uh, that's actually what I'm using. I'm just using like a name generator, and I just set it to Dutch. Because it makes it sound fantastical, I think. I've always liked Dutch namings, naming style. Actually, I suppose they don't need to label them country anymore or anything like that because they're all... Um, that's why I made the, the thing. Okay. Excellent. I'll just keep on keeping on. Oh, yeah, and always add these things to the dictionary. That way you, you can get rid of your red lines. That way you don't feel like you're, like, misspelling something. Just, just because, you you know, it might get a little weird. Okay. Hendrik, it's uh, a pretty darn clear character name, I think. I don't think we could make that into anything. It's okay. These are all real names, but... Uh, Tastra? Ooh, that could be a city. <clears throat> could that be a country? I don't know. Okay. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. I wonder how I would do a toaster. Poster. Hmm. Yo, you know what I need to do? I'm sorry. I made a mistake. I actually made a mistake. Look at me. We need to get the oak up. Where is it? I'm, I'm sorry. Hold on. I'm, I'm trying to find a, a widget in, in Twitch here. Ah, there we are. I just threw in a chat box. That way your chats can appear on the screen. Uh, that's an interesting idea. Um, the only the only issue I could possibly see there being is ju just simply... Oh, actually, let's put the chat down here. Um, the only issue I could possibly see uh, us having is just, if it's a fantasy world, I don't know how a, a toast, you know... What kind of a toaster? How would this, this toaster work? Give me more details about this toaster. Otherwise, you know, <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I never like uh, getting down on people. Anyway, uh, this is probably a city. I think it's a pretty good city name. And, you know, you just kind of, you keep doing this a bunch. Shit. Uh, that could be a country. The country of shit. I try and keep it evenly spaced out uh, for the most part. And we can even change country of origin as well. Uh, okay, that's that's just a character name. You can never run out of character names. Like, if something just sounds weird and you can't use it, like Gilbert, you have to... Hey! Welcome! Uh, welcome to the stream. I'm uh, doing kind of a mini-stream right now. Uh, just showing some d &D. This is not part of my normal stream schedule, of course. But I'm designing a d, &D. Oh, no, you're not gonna... You can't see everything. Um, I'm designing a... Showing off how I get my name generations for my uh, d, &D campaigns, and... 
I think we're good at doing pretty good so far. No. Um, ooh, that's a city, if I've ever seen one. Uh, you want to have, uh, the way I like to do it is you, you want to have um, a little bit of cities, a bit more countries than lots of character names. Most of these names I'm going to get are going to be for characters, but it's good. If you get a weird name like that, you definitely want to throw it into a uh, city, for sure. Um, something small, for example, like for is good for country. And then anything that's just obviously a name, just make it a name. There's nothing wrong with having tons and tons of names. Like Lydia, yeah, easy. Not spelled the way they are. See, it's stuff like that, but that's just if. I think I want that to be a character name because that sounds so funny. I love it. I actually love it. That's, that's great. And I gotta make sure you guys are seeing all this. Well, you guys are seeing the name generation, even if you can't see the whole Word document. Or maybe I can slide the Word document over a bit. Did that work? Oh no, I don't want it to be full screen. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Trying to make this work for you, for everybody. Okay. Let's slide this over. You know, I can even make my webcam a bit smaller. It's okay. Okay. Great, great. Now everyone can see what I'm working on. Okay. Marnix. Ooh, could that be a country? I have a lot of M countries already, though. Let's make that a city. I like Marnix, though. That's a, that's a good name. I will not be playing StarCraft II today. Um, I mean, I can if you want to later, but uh, right now I'm just doing um, this. I'm just working on D&D &D stuff. Um, I'll be on tomorrow, obviously, doing uh, regu my regular gaming content um, from, like, you know, the 9 to 3 o'clock range. But uh, for right now, at this moment, I'm just doing this. Um, Kasia, have I already used that? No, that's clearly a character name. Isle, or Ills. Mm. Isle? Is that just Isle? Ills? I don't really like that one. I can't really say it. Ooh, Aldwin. That's a city. That's definitely a city. Or Aldwin, sorry. Okay. Let's see here. Levy. Levy. Mm. Mm. I'll just keep that as a... It's a nice name, but I don't think I can use it. I don't even know what that is. I'm not keeping names that I can't say. Richard. Excellent. Joris. Yep, character name. Again, we want lots of character names. Nothing wrong with having plenty of character names. Uh, having lots of cities and stuff like that is good, too. What? I, I don't know. Ooh, the city of Caroline? That'd be kind of cool. There's some good stuff here. We're definitely getting good stuff. I'm not going to do uh, too many more of these. A neck. Let's see. Bruise. Sure. It's kind of fun just coming up with names. No, I'm getting tired of M names. Romaine. Ooh. That could actually be a country. The country of Romaine. Like Romania. But it's, it's spelled weird. Okay, I don't like that. I'm trying to pick names that I can. Ifj. <laughs> no, I'm not doing another Eve one. Uh, Mitcha. Great. Excellent character name. Or Micah. I guess would be the, the right way to say it. Lex. Frederick, yep. But I'm gonna spell it in the English way. Lao. Kind of a more of an Asian name for that one. Weeb. Is that actually weeb? Is that I say it, weeb? That is, that is great. Honestly, that, I really do like the, the weeb one. Okay, so now that we have our Sam, now that we have our, our random name generation, uh, which is perfectly fine. We have plenty of uh, stuff to start out with. Uh, we want to think about uh, actually, funny enough, a good way to start this. Ooh, sorry, let's uh, spread it out a bit, make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, we definitely. Let me let me make this smaller too. I want I want to. I like showing off the logos and stuff whenever I can, but I don't want it to take away from the actual creative experience. Okay, that's that's okay, yeah. You guys can see for the most part. Just kind of keeping it in one... Yes. Perfect. Excellent. Okay, so uh, now that we have a bunch of names, which is great, uh, we really do want to have a lot of names. We're not map making today, just to be super super clear. We're not. It's not about making a map of the, the country of the world. We actually want to start first thinking about our god system. So, uh, so we'll call this section 
are. Um, can I share some? You can definitely share. You can share as much as you want. This is going to be a, a big kind of living, breathing sort of world that I'm trying to do. So you're more than welcome to throw stuff in. Uh, okay, that's a link. Um, not sure I'm going to be able to. I'm going to throw this outside of the stream just in case it's private stuff. Okay. All right. It's a document. Let me see. So is this a... Uh, let's see. Oh, it's a race. Ah! It's a race of people. Excellent. I like that. You know what? I'll th if, if with your permission, I will throw that into my game, actually. I, I can't read it right now because I'm, I'm doing my thing, but I'll give it a look over um, and I'll, I'll happily include that, actually, if you want. You have my Excellent. Thank you so much, Faelery. Um, I don't know, just so you know, because it takes a lot of work to set up what I'm going to be trying to do here. So the actual stream of me doing D&D &D won't be for a little while. Uh, but if you go ahead and follow me, you'll be able to be updated on as to when I actually start doing the D&D the &D streams. Um, and I'll have a schedule posted, of course, in like the schedule section underneath the, the stream, so that way you guys can, uh, can enjoy that. Uh, you know. Okay. Anyway. Now we have, uh, like I was saying before, uh, we need to focus on our, and I gotta check the time, make sure, because again, I have adult things I need to do. Um, we need to have our religious, uh, I like to call it an infrastructure, which, I, which is a weird way to, uh, to describe things sometimes, but it's important to note uh, that um, with this kind of, uh, whenever you're trying to make a god system, it's important to understand the way it works. So for example, are we going to have um, uh, ooh, how do they describe it? Uh, is it, I think it's a monolithic. Or poly, it's either a mono or a poly god system. So are you gonna, are you gonna have one or multiple gods? In mine, there's just gonna be one god. We're gonna keep it a monotheistic. Yeah, monotheistic, that's what it is. Uh, so, just to keep it straight, just to keep it simple, I don't wanna, I don't, I'm not trying to make this world have like, 12 different gods with, you know, a bunch of different realms. It's not it's not supposed to be that extensive. I mean, I could later, we could make different origins if we wanted, but for now we're going to keep it simple. We're going to keep it to one god, and uh, the question is how long ago did the this planet come to existence? Well, the planet uh, itself, and the whole name of the Venron, it, it's named Venron because that's going to be the actual name of the planet. Or the name of the campaign. It's both. It's kind of both. You know? Alright. We have one god. Uh, so we're going to say that this god um, needs people to worship it. To, um, I guess, to, to gain power. Okay. Each follower... Um, Ads. And this is where the, it is a game. Uh, it's important to note D&D is a game. So uh, it, it's going to add, each follower is going to add one point of um, faith uh, to the god's pool of, um, of power. And this god is going to be um, kind of just a passive god. He's not going to be someone who directly influences the world unless absolutely needed. So what we want to think about is uh, we're going to have like a, a scaling system, right? So, for example, at like zero, so we can make some, some representative. If nobody's worshipping him, uh, he stops existing. And that could have whatever ramifications I so desire later. Like, if everyone were to forget about him, all of his worshippers die, he's just not there anymore. Okay, if we got like, you know, 10 to, uh, I don't know, 100 people, or 1 to 100, I guess is how you'd write it. 1 to 100 people, um... Essentially, it exists, but doesn't have any way to influence the world. Okay, and then if we do 101 to, I don't know, we could say 1,000. Um, it has the power to influence nature. 
and then if it has, you know, 1,001 till, like, I don't know, we could say even 10,000. Then we could say it has the power to influence people. And this is going to be on a good versus evil scale. So this is for both ways. So if you imagine there's like two of these going one way or the other way, it represents if he's, he's good or evil. Like I could even make it into a little graph if you want. We could uh, we could design a little graph or like a table. Um, I don't know how many boxes we would need, but we'll, we'll try and keep it simple. So for example, uh, this could be like 10K, you know, 1K, 100, zero, and then it goes back to 100, 1K, 10K, right? So this is kind of the concept, uh, so that way you know when you're like making your own game system, you can be like, okay, so this country's worshiping him, there's like this many people, so this is how it would go, right? And you could have, this is a neutral color, these could all be like, you know, written in like, like, or they could stay like, hmm, Sure, we could say that's blue for good. And then this would be like red. So then there, you have a you have kind of a little scale from which and, and it, it he can go either way, right, on this on this scale. Oh no, no, we don't want that. Okay. So we have now we have a point system for how the god works. Um, how are we gonna have the, the world come to be? Well, it's gonna be poofed into existence. I'm not gonna make it like Oh, he took like pieces of the no. Uh, makes it a bit too weird, and I don't. I don't think we need to go that far back, especially for players to understand. Um, so the question is, what kind of player benefits are we going to be giving? Uh, a good one that we could always give is just um, increased um, odds on skill checks. Oh yeah, we should label this for uh, the player benefits. And this is an example. Uh, none of this is obviously concrete. This isn't necessarily how it's going to work. I'm just giving, laying out, kind of showing off a general framework of how you can make this. All right, so increased odds and skill checks, that'd be a good one. Uh, we could say if that's at the, uh, you know, the 100 level, right? We could say at 1,000. We could say that they're... Um, I don't know, they have uh, increased stats. Because odds are different than stats. Like, there's a threshold and then there's, like, the actual stats itself. And then if they get it up to, like, 10,000, it could be that they have uh, advantage on certain, certain stats. There you go. Or skill, or skill checks, I should say. Or it could even be an additional advantage. It doesn't have to be just one. Ad like, cause if the way advantage works, you just reroll extra times three advantage. Okay, so that's like an example of how it would be. And this is if the player uh, is on the side, is supporting the god with good intention or evil intention. And so there might be some unique things that happen just from being good or evil. So good versus evil. Okay, so for so for good, maybe um, at the 100 level, it could say like, okay, we could be like, well, how about we um, we take the um, the benefit, right? So we look at the player benefits in general, regardless of it, increased odds and skill checks. Maybe if they're good, maybe they are um, more. Uh, they just have more charisma. They're just more charismatic, right? At 1,000 uh, points, they could be, you know, if whatever, wherever they are, if the, again, if the, depending on the worship level of the god. And the worship level, for the record, is going to be something that, um, while artificial, um, it's something that the player can directly affect. Like, for example, if they want to go a faith route, they could be like, okay, hey, you people in this bar believe in this god, here's what I can do. And then I'd roll skill check, you know, see if the, the people believe him, and then um, there you'd go. We would be, uh, there we are. We, we would definitely have, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know how else to say it. 
would be the the right amount of how would I say it? So it's like it's like the player's followers. So good or evil, whatever path they want to take, um, it'd be the, the people. These are people who the player can convince to be a follower, right? This isn't the whole world. The whole world isn't based on this. But it's like, what, how will this God affect the player itself and the player's uh, lens through which they view the world, right? So for again, for good, uh, more charisma at a thousand. Perhaps um, maybe they can get more um, people to rally to them. Like if the if the player needs direct help, they would uh, be more likely to uh, help the player just because of the faith. And if you mix it all the way up to ten thousand, uh, we could even say um, can influence those of other faiths. Because even though there's only one God, there's still gonna be other faiths. There's gonna be all kinds of religions, but there's only one true religion in this. There's gonna be one. And uh, let's look at some bad benefits. Although, granted, these kind of benefits, um, they're all like positive. Maybe a hundred would be like, uh, you actually would still keep more charisma either way. Or more charisma for for good actions and then for bad actions. If you, if, uh, like if, if you, they help someone like, from under a burning building, that's a good action. Um, but then, or like if they're trying to like uh, convince someone to give to the homeless or something, that's a good action. But if it's a bad action, it's like, oh, I'm going to like give you scorn or something. You know, stuff like that. So if they have a certain amount of followers and they take it in a bad direction, uh, more charisma for bad actions, thousand. Again, uh, they could maybe have ooh, more, instead of more people rallying to them, more people deserting their current... Um, positions. That can be general. It doesn't need to be anything specific. Because again, a lot of d and is just kind of making stuff up on the fly. It's just that having this lay, lay kind of groundwork out for the whole world is really helpful. For 10,000, uh, we could to join yours. Or this one, if they take a bad route, instead of getting more people to join, because um, after 10,000, there's no need. Uh, you can say, you can to leave theirs, which is different. It, to be super sure, it is different because you're just making them lose their faith in something, not necessarily they're joining you. That is the difference. Okay. So we outlined that. Good versus evil. So regardless of whichever side they get, oh, wrong one. They'll have those benefits up top, and then good or evil, they'll have different benefits uh, after that. Okay, so we have the uh, general outline for um, how the religion works, and uh, magic is kind of, it's there, uh, certainly, but it's not something that's like, oh, like everyone does. It's like a very special thing. So what we want to do next is actually go ahead and create our magic system, and it's going to be uh, faith-based. Right, or like faith in the God, right? Because surely no God would want to be like, okay, let's let's not, you know, give uh, stuff. Like, uh, for example, um, as, like, we could make a list of spells, for example. Like, like starting spells, that's actually a pretty good one. There, okay. So one, uh, and each of these spells would cost different amounts of energy. Uh, for them to do, or maybe require a skill check. Actually, I think I want to do it based on a skill check. Okay, so for intelligence, okay, what's a good spell? Maybe um, at level one, uh, they could have the power to, um, I don't know, um, just make it kind of cool. They can communicate with animals. Wait, why is it not?
I, I don't know what's going on with the uh, the tabbing thing. Okay, uh, so at level two, uh, maybe perhaps they can um, maybe they can mind control animals. And then uh, level three, they could communicate Tele telepathy, right? Communicate with people. Level four. Mind control people. For example, this could be some of it. I might do stuff below this as well. Uh, like, we could do... Maybe they just... Because um, it's an intelligent-based skill. Because um, you're getting into their heads. Um, you could do uh, something like... Just it like naturally, like before they've even leveled up the skill, if they're getting like a tinkling of a little bit of uh, power or a little bit of uh, intelligence, they might do some say something like, "Okay, um, well we'll go ahead and uh, what do we give them? Maybe maybe something simple like they can use use a spell. And we'll name these spells. They're not just gonna be level one or whatever." Um, these are all extra spells you can add on. So there's communication or there's mind control. Like you can either talk to them or just directly control it where you're not giving like a, you're not speaking to them, you're just controlling them. Um, we, we could, uh, what do we do? I'll take it a suggestion actually, if someone wants to come up with that. In the meantime, um, let's think about uh, charisma. What would be a good charismatic spell? Because it's good to have, it's good to have some spells just so that we, players know what they can do and what they can't do. Uh, charisma level one, perhaps they could do some sort of a, a luck based thing. Okay, almost out of time. Let's just try and get through the spell system. Okay, uh, so perhaps they can have an inc increased. Um, maybe that's the, the level zero. Just They can increase their stats. They, they can use a spell and bump up their, their luck odds. Right, just in general. Okay. That's actually a good one. To just, to just have their stats increased, it's pretty solid. Okay, so you have increased stats. Um, now the actual level one. Um, for example, maybe they can... Um, uh, maybe it's easier for them to get away with a lie. And these are like, these are actual spells. These aren't like, oh, my charisma stats higher. Um, Cause you gotta think about it like, what are you doing to someone to make your to make the charisma skill be important? Most magic uh, is you, well actually no. You know what, charisma is stupid. Let's do wisdom. <laughs> I thought about it, I was like, wait a minute. This doesn't, uh, the reason 5e. Um, we need wisdom. So there's intelligence, so you can either be like a, like for a wizard there's intelligence, or like a warlock that begins like wisdom or like, Something else, you know. So it depends what, what kind of skills you want. So, obviously increase stats again. I guess I didn't need to erase that part, but whatever. Okay. Level one, um, they can have, um, maybe the, the player could, uh, if they use their level one spell, they're like, oh, I want to be wiser about, um, or kind of more knowledgeable, because intelligence is like, actual about like the mind but wisdom is more like experience so perhaps they could have uh, learn extra history of target object or hidden details right level two they could get um, you know we're getting a little bit deeper into this perhaps they could um, know the value of a particular Just by looking at it, they just know it. Like they can test a spell, and then like they walk into a bazaar, for example, and they're like, "Oh, I, I know what all this is actually worth, and what I could do, what what it's valued at, right? Something like that." Because they're wise, because they like they just know it, kind of like a street smart sort of thing. But it's a spell, so like, you cast it and be like, "I know this." Um, oh. I got a message here. Oh, Twitch. What's going on with Twitch? Is my uh, streams not updated? Okay. Nope, it's just other stuff. 
Okay, uh, another valuable particular item. That's always a good one. Uh, level three, what can we do at level three? Let's think. What would be a good level three spell? Like an actual spell. Like So there, so it's a, like a wizard or someone magical using a, casting it, using the wisdom stat. Perhaps uh, they could, and this is like a self-cast, like targeting themselves. They're like, okay, I'm going to perhaps, mm, they could, uh, now you could do line. Uh, well, not line, but like, uh, you could identify, um, like, mm. maybe, hmm, would be a good one, because I want there to be something fun. And there'll be, there'll be combat spells also, but I'm, I'm thinking of, like, starting stuff that they can do that's more passive, and then combat stuff, I'll be, I'll be giving them spells like that, too. This isn't just, oh yeah, I should probably, I should probably make that clear. Starting spells that are passive, right? So they're going to get a combat spell and a passive spell for each time they level up, the magic person levels up. And it's going to get the magic kind of laid out first, because then I can easily make weapons to be at whatever value of damage or whatever I need after the OP magic's done. That's kind of the main thought process, I think, and I think that's pretty reasonable as well. Um, okay, so we have increased that. Mm, what can we do this good passive one for level three? Let me think about this. Because uh, the first one was easy, because I, I just, you know, I went start with rate, you know, lower beans, and then you went to higher beans. This one, you know, history of an object. Now the value of an item, maybe I identify the, um, maybe it's not very good, but the possible, history of a person. And then at level four, they would be able to know um, clear subversive details. Like for example, what would the difference be in like an actual game setting? If someone's like, I'm gonna use the level three wisdom, they'll be like, okay, I'm gonna say based on uh, with the spell you've used, um, you can tell that the person likely had a had a hard life. Um, you know, they grew up in like a smaller town, and when they came to the city, they probably didn't have much money based on their clothing, and that they're still probably working in hardship. But then level four would be like, well, you can clearly tell. Um, it's easier for you to easy for you to tell based on the way they're standing and the the way that they're moving their hand gestures that they don't have a lot of experience in talking or or being very social. They're very um, inward thinking. Right? Stuff like that. That'd be like the difference. Right? Of like how surface level. There's like the surface level stuff for wisdom, like to instantly know something rather than. Because the other thing is like someone can always like look at perception and I'll be like, oh, there's a person wearing this and this. I'll give like clearly what you can see, but then the wisdom spell will be like, you can kind of tell more about them. And then even the, the higher level, you can clearly. You can pretty much get fully make out a person essentially. You, you can like know what's going on. Right? So now we make combat spells because that's always fun. For the intelligence spells, level zero, they can um, do a wave blast, uh, which is going to be equivalent to, mm, I don't know, we can say four damage. Or we'll make it out on dice. We'll make it all dice, all right? Make it, we'll make it one d4 damage, right? Level one, we can do like, um, this is like intelligent stuff, right? So you could do like um, like a mind pierce, um, and that could be like one d six damage. Then level two, we could have like um, you know maybe like a no, that'll be level four. Um, it could be like a. Like you're piercing into their mind, you could do one where like a mind grab. Ooh, that'd be good. Or squeeze, and that could be one d eight. And what players can do with these attack spells, they're all one d. If you they wanted to study and train to make them better, you just increase the amount of dice you're rolling. But then the type of dice will always stay the same. So this is d eight. You know, so level three. Oh wait, why did I do zero? That should be, um, 
Oh yeah, because they need a, a, a thing. Yeah. Okay, so. We'll call it a brain crush, because you're crushing their brain. That's one, so that's 1d10 damage. And then at level four, they could have a brain melt. So that like they're so strong, they're literally melting the personality of themselves, of the person, essentially. So that'd be 1d12 of damage. And then if they want to upgrade these individual ones, they, they're more than welcome to, to study it. Like you could be like, okay, I liked the wave blast because it was subtle. Um, because like each of these will have different levels of noticeability. So each... Uh, so it's uh, it has uh, this one will be not noticeable, and then this will be noticed on a one d four fifty fifty odds, right? This would be noticed on a 1d6. See how this kind of works? Uh, they're all 50-50 odds, actually. Like, if you want to do it sneakily. So, there, I could even put a note in. not noticeable and I know you're thinking how how is this uh, make sense because when you have like it's all 50 50 you got to understand so I'm increasing the die is simply a psychological effect it'll always be 50 50 regardless of whatever it is right so it, the difference is with the bigger die it makes players think that they're being more noticed when actually there isn't so that's something important to note when you're designing it you're like oh is this more noticeable and then they're like mm, maybe not okay so that's the intelligent ones. Uh, now we just need wisdom, but I have to go. So thank you all so much for watching. Genuinely do enjoy the stream. I will be back later today, hopefully around the one o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Um, I hope you've liked this first session of going through designing a D&D campaign. And hopefully the people who I want to play the campaign don't uh, watch. That's why I put the spoiler warning in there. Okay, uh, as always, oh yeah, uh, make sure to subscribe to YouTube, all this stuff all this info is going to be on my YouTube channel, um, as well as um, you can support me on my Patreon if you want to, if, you know, if I get enough money, I don't know if I have a goal yet, but I could maybe pay to get like some actual miniatures and we could do like a, a real life show the camera. That'd be something that'd be really cool actually to do, but uh, you know, it's a long way off. Anyway, thanks. Uh, my dog's here. Woo! And I'll see y'all next time.